Hey everyone, welcome to another one of our chats with an expert in the field of digital learning, online learning. Uh, today we have the opportunity, the privilege to chat with a colleague who I've known for a number of years out of University of Texas at Arlington, Harriet Watkins. Harriet, welcome here. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. So uh, one of the things, maybe actually maybe let's start with a little bit of background. Uh, what, what is your background and uh, what have you been doing with your young life? <laughs> so my background is actually in instructional design. I started at the University of Texas Arlington um, back way back in 2006 and rapidly moved into managing instructional designers. And in two, 2014, I became the director of online learning for the University of Arkansas system. So that's my background. I'm now working for a private educational company uh, that does uh, support work for online courses. So that's it in a nutshell, really quickly. Uh, well, I, I have more expertise than that in adult learning, but we won't go there. That's pre-UTA, so yeah. that's it. Well, and, and one of the things I find fascinating about your work is you were actually in a position that many faculty are in now. And that was a number of years ago. You mentioned the University of Arkansas right. system. And what you actually mm -hmm. did there was you were involved in helping set up a new fully online university. So it's what many people are experiencing now, but at a much larger scale. And setting up a new online institution, it's not like you go to the book of setting up an online university. It's you're, you're so much of what you're doing is policy, there's political dimensions, there's building capabilities for support, there's building capabilities for teachers, making technology decisions and the list goes on. Do you mind sharing a little bit what you learned in moving the University of Arkansas system online? What were your takeaways that might impact teachers today? <laughs> Okay, so I think one of the first takeaways is to give yourself grace. Um, everything's not going to work perfectly the first time around, and there will be many iterations uh, of just in course building itself. We had we had big goals when we started out, and we had we took two big bites of those goals, and we needed to take smaller chunks. So I think in this at this particular time in history you just need to give yourself and your students some grace you know it's not about being perfect or having everything perfectly aligned in the course you will get there but you're gonna have to take baby steps give yourself the grace to take baby steps that's what we had to do and when we first started building um online courses at the university we were up against uh, a state, for those who don't, may or may not know, Arkansas is a very rural state. So we were going after uh, adult students who had had some college but had left, and we're, we were trying to get them to come back and finish their degree. So those uh, particular individuals, first of all, were in areas that may not have even had good Wi-Fi or bandwidth. I mean, so we were always thinking about how can we deliver the course information in such a way that if they get to Wi-Fi, they can log on, how can they use that, info, download it, use it, and then upload their assignments. So I think if you think of ways to care for your student in ways that you may, you wouldn't have definitely if you were in a face-to-face -face situation, but especially online for those who are disadvantaged in that way, you might want to just think about ways that you can deliver the content differently and take that into consideration. Also, we used um, backward design in our courses. So we thought of, we started with our faculty um, with the end in mind, and then from there started working backwards into how we wanted that course to um, be delivered we also thought about um, creating a supportive environment in that we had a lot of uh, communication going back and forth between 
the faculty member and the student and also the faculty member with us because we, like I said, there were lots of iterations and we were changing things on the fly as we go to make the course better for the students in those early days. Once we got it and it flowed, then it was okay. But at first, and I think in this situation, there are gonna be a lot of faculty that, you know what, you, it's okay to change it up as you go because we're all in it together and we're all learning together. And uh, we took a lot of feedback from the students in the early days to see how the students uh, were receiving the content and what we needed to change or, you know, make better. And, and it sounds like so many of the experiences that you have are, uh, they sit at this interesting point between planning and crisis. <laughs> you know, when you yeah. move an entire system online and one of the, the points we've been discussing early on and really uh, just at the start of the course now, but that we focused on was you, you have a, a two-fold structure that you're up against. One is, it is crisis mode now. Like you're literally having to decide, am I going to use Zoom or Skype video right. or Microsoft Teams or whatever else? You don't have time to focus on alignment between learning outcomes, teaching practices and assessment. You don't have time to create a sort of social community interaction structure to your course. This is literally right. your house is on fire. Right. We're not gonna remodel right now. Right. And so that's stage one, that's the crisis stage. Yeah. But for many of them, they are going to be in the next couple of months, once you've concluded this semester, it's looking like we are still going to have disruption to the typical university model, model come three, four, five, six months down the road. So based on your experience sitting between crisis and planning, what would you advise as a learning designer in particular that teachers may want to think about in terms of longer term recognition of where things are trending and how to get their courses online in a quality way come fall, for example, or come September? If they don't have uh, <laughs> an instructional designer to work with, which is really great if you do please take advantage of that at your institution that is a great benefit to you but if you don't and you're doing this on your own i would look at key areas where there were pain points every faculty member will know what the pain points were along the way when their course went live and they had these students in it and they were throwing it together all of a sudden every faculty member can point to that point in time and say, this was a problem. The students really, you know, they were up in arms over this particular situation. And I would just work on those pain points first. I would get those retooled, work out a way to do that better. And you guys have given them so many great, great resources. They should be, there's so much information out there. There's a way to look at or take a problem that you had in a course and there is some, some faculty member somewhere who has had that same situation and they can give you some great advice. I would do yeah, the pain points first. Work yeah, that out. First. Yeah, exactly. No, no, that's, that's great. I think the pain points, and I love the point that you're making about you need to work with yeah. professionals within your institutions. Hopefully you have them. You might have them in the teaching and learning centers. You might have them in, in, you know, in, in individual faculty. But if you have that option, that's really point one to look at and then, and then hopefully broaden it out from there. Right, because uh, the instructional designer is the person that just, that's what they do. They look at how to design the instruction for you to teach it to your students so you don't have to do that part you have someone else who that's their main job is how to deliver it to your students so take advantage yeah exactly well and so final question here if you were to sit down with a faculty member and they're mm -hmm. feeling like many people taking this course are overwhelmed huge number of new tools all kinds of new language that they don't hear asynchronous learning synchronous learning communities of practice community of inquiry social presence and the list goes on like we're throwing both the sort of psychology of learning buzzwords at them and a growing number right. of technology buzzwords at them so if you were to sit down with this faculty member with this prof this teacher that's now in this environment what would you advise her to focus on what kind of a mindset do you think she would need to have in order to navigate the next few months I think she needs to have an open mindset. Um, 
because a lot of faculty come in with a fixed mindset. This is the way I've always done it. This is the way, if it has to be online, it can only be one certain way. I think if you come in with an open mindset, you'll get so much more and just be willing to try it. Be willing to try something new, something that sounds different that you're not familiar with, but it could be so much, so beneficial to your students if you just give yourself the opportunity <laughs> to try something new. Um, also, just remember that obviously the most important thing is your students and showing them empathy and just realize that they understand, you know, if you talk to your students and say, look, this is new to me, I'm trying to give you this information and teach you this particular concept, um, do you guys have ideas for a better way for me to bring this across to you? They may come forth with things you didn't even think about on how you could teach your course. So just stay open. I think that's the best mindset to have, especially now. You have to stay open and flexible. That's my answer for that question. Open and flexible. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Watkins, for taking the time to share your insight. I love the the, the recognition and, and the emphasis that you made on in the response to the last question around. We really do need to partner, if you will, with our students. They're going to have opinions and ideas. They're as confused as and yes. as overwhelmed as many people are. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Great. Well, again, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. Appreciate your insights, and always a pleasure to chat. Oh, same here, same here, thanks. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>